Super Rugby, Trans Tasman, Saturday Games, Highlanders, Waratahs, Brumbies, Hurricanes. We'll go through these two games. Still everything to play for for the two Kiwi teams, especially the Highlanders, who are sitting pretty uh, first equal, I guess. They're still behind the Blues on um, on points difference, but they are ahead, uh, not ahead, they are level in terms of their actual points on the board. Um, Highlanders have dropped a couple of points in terms of missing out on bonus points, but with a perfect record in terms of their win-loss ratio, they are still in with a shout. We'll go through the stats, the lineups, and you guys can leave any thoughts on how things might be going to play out. The first one. Highlanders, Waratahs down in Dunedin. Waratahs are none from three. And their injuries are not going to help what's going to be a pretty tough ask. The Highlanders, as I mentioned, three from O. Uh, the only concern for them is a couple of their All Blacks. They don't have that many All Blacks in that squad, if you think about it. Do they have any starting? Hmm, uh, yeah, they've got a couple of guys out, but um, still pretty good squad, despite the fact that they've got uh, their, their big guns out, but yeah, they'll need to go out and get a bonus point win, that's kind of minimum requirements for them. Their front row is to Groot, Dixon, and Tokolahi, Dixon is captain this week, it's pretty much the same, same, Putty Putty Parkinson, and uh, Brent Evans is your second row, so that means Dixon is down on the bench, that's that's been pretty useful all season, and it's a pretty dynamic, hard-hitting second row, if anything. Uh, the back row has the change where I mentioned the big guns being out. Shannon Frizzell's got an ankle injury, so he is absent for this one. Lynch just moves to the number six jersey. One of the competition's top tacklers in Billy Harmon is at seven. And uh, Japanese international Himeno, who has proven himself to be a jack-of-all-trades and very good at all of them, uh, is there at number eight. Hamilton has to play nine. Uh, because Aaron Smith is getting a rest. There's uh, apparently uh, guidance that All Blacks players shouldn't be playing five games in a row. So Aaron Smith is due for a sit and uh, Hunt is there at 10. So remember with Fakatava out, Hamilton's kind of the third guy. Although I still rate him as a pretty decent player. Um, it's still obviously a, a loss when you're not got Aaron Smith to start. Gregory and Collins, 12-13. That's actually been a pretty good midfield. Um, maybe not the biggest names. Gregory's having a hell of a season. Uh, Nareke, Tomkinson, and Ioane is the back three. Nare Nareke, uh, he's electric, man. I, I keep avoiding picking him in my team of the week, not because I don't like him. I really rate him. He's a phenomenal uh, young player. Really electric. Like He's the kind of guy that will get guys into watching rugby union if you just see him ball in hand. So... Uh, I do I do like him, despite the fact that I keep picking other left wingers in my teams of the week. Uh, Coltman, Dan Leonard, Brown's back, which is good news. Honick, Dixon, Renton, uh, Askett, Gilbert, and Ben Nicholas make out what is a bit of a changed up uh, line of, lineup for the Highlanders. For the Waratahs, speaking of changed up, man, you got three props all out injured. That's that's unfortunate. Uh, Angus Bell, Harry Johnson-Holmes, and Tetra Faulkner are all out injured, unavailable. So... You've got Tuala, Pareki, and Breen starting in the front row. Pareki's the only same name who started last week. Uh, Williams and Wetton is the second row. Uh, and Swinton, Tizano, and Dempsey is the uh, is the back row. Tizano, kind of like Billy Harmon, is an absolute tackling machine. Although he's been a little bit criticized by his coaches for kind of falling off the pace towards the end of games because he does tend to go hard pretty early. Uh, Swinton and Dempsey, to be fair, have actually had pretty good numbers this season in terms of both their attack and defense. Gordon uh, has been maybe the best Wallabies nine this campaign. I'm not sure. Nick White hasn't played apart from one game last week in the Trans-Tasman campaign. Uh, but Gordon has just looked lively. I'm not sure if it's because the Tars have looked a bit average. Uh, but he's just looked to add a bit of spark when they're going forward. Uh, Will Harrison gets the crack at 10 this week because he's been playing fullback recently, but Donaldson is out injured. Uh, Fouquetti and Parise is the midfield member. Parise is huge going forward. Uh, it's just defensively, he still has a wee issue. Likewise, no one needs to watch as they're on the left wing. Defensively, can be a bit suspect as one of my neighbors decides to do some construction, cutting some wood anyway. Uh, Newsom and Maddox at 14 and 15. Might just see if I can shut my door. Right, now that my door's shut, what was I talking about? Uh, now we need to watch there, Maddox, those are guys in the back three. Maddox, likewise, uh, not the biggest defender, and Newsom's there as well, 14. That's kind of like they've got players who are just the story of the Tar season. You've got Maddox, now we need to watch there, Parisa, who can all absolutely set the game alight going forward. Just defensively, they struggle. Now, the bench is interesting because you've got Abel and Talakai listed, and then Reserve tight head prop is to be confirmed. TBC. That's... 
A bit of a sad state of affairs. Uh, Kaird Harris. Interestingly, Raboni Warren Vossiatho. Vossiatho? Used to play for the Sunwolves. He's back in Australia. He's on the Tars bench for this one. That guy was lightning with the Sunwolves. And I think they moved him from like flanker to center as well. He could legit play both positions. Warren Vossiatho. That's it. Haven't seen him play for a couple of years, but man, he's electric. Uh, Grant and Edmed are there as well. In terms of the head-to-head -head stuff between these sides, there's some areas which are pretty even. Tries 16-13, so pretty tight in terms of tries scored. The Waratahs know how to score a try. The Waratahs have actually generated more clean breaks than the, the Highlanders, 33-27. to um, That's fourth against seventh, if you're looking in the scheme of the greater competition. Uh, the Waratahs are the top carrying team. However, the defense is eighth with 80% tackle success. The Highlanders are first at 92.2, which is proper test match level stuff. Uh, the Highlanders' lineout operates better than the Tars, but the Tars' scrum operates better than the Highlanders. But that's probably usually when they've got three other props available instead of having to be confirmed on the bench. So, yeah, it could be a pretty hairy one in terms of set piece time. Uh, top try scorers for each team, it's Gregory with three and Newsom with two in terms of their uh, their backline players. Bell is the Tars' top carrier, but as I mentioned, he's not available uh, for the Landers. It's Nareki. Uh, interesting that Gus Bell, I think he's the top carrier in Super Rugby Transmission across the board. Um, top tacklers, Swinton and Harry Johnson Holmes. Well, Harry Johnson Holmes is not available. And as I mentioned, Billy Harmon, I think he's second overall in the entire competition as well. Proper work rate. Fella. So yeah, um, mission here for the Highlanders is absolutely bonus point win. Anything else, probably not acceptable. Uh, for the Waratahs, be competitive, hold up at scrum time, see if they can find a replacement tight head. And um, yeah, if they can get any kind of result, that's a bonus, I would say. They're going into this one in a pretty unfavorable position. The bookies have got the Highlanders by a whopping 26 points. The rugby forecast algorithm says 19 the next game, Brumbies and Hurricanes, could be a wee bit closer. Let's hope the Brumbies are still winless, though, none from three. But remember, they started their tour with the top three New Zealand teams. They went away to the Crusaders, got close, then had pretty disappointing results against the Chiefs and the Blues away. They're back home for the first time in this competition. The Hurricanes have been exceptional. I've been a bit guilty of maybe underrating them a bit. They're three from three. Second spot only to the Blues, as I mentioned. Um, it's just the points difference that is the separating factor there. But um, yeah, it's another chance for them to prove some doubters wrong in this one. Uh, when I go through the Hurricanes numbers, they, they make really pretty reading, I will say that. Uh, for the Brumbies, you got Sio Lonigan and Ala Latoa as the front row. So that means Fyanga drops to the bench for this one. But Lockie Lonigan's proof he's pretty good. Uh, pretty good replacement as well. Swain and Frost is one of the better second row combinations in Australia at the moment. Swain especially has been really impressive. Uh, Valtini, Reimer and Stowers is the back row. Reimer, I think it's his first start for the Brumbies at open side. And it's the one position in their back row they probably haven't got nailed on. Because uh, Valtini, whether he's a 6 or 8, has been phenomenal. Um, there's no Samu, but Stowers is there at 8. And him and Valtini can kind of swap there. They're, they're pretty... Pretty flexible to play six or eight. Ryan Lonigan's there at nine, so there's um, Nick White being forced to drop to the bench for this one. I'm not sure if that's a, uh, a rotation thing. Maybe because they know their campaign's essentially over. It's good to give Lonigan another crack. Uh, Lonicio is there at 10. Same, same for him. Kunzel gets promoted from the bench to play at 12. Ikitao is there at 13. Mac Hansen gets another crack, so there's a little bit of rotation going on. Uh, Solomon Akata and Tom Banks round up the other outside backs. Other guys on the bench. Tom Wright's dropped to the bench. Simone's on the bench. Tom Cusack, Tom Hooper, uh, Harry Lloyd, Fanga, etc. So it's a bit of a rotation. As I mentioned, they can't make the final. But at home, they'll at least be wanting to put in a competitive performance and maybe give some guys a chance to get some minutes. For the Canes, they've kept it pretty stable. Namiya Coles and Lomax is the front row. Almoor's got concussion, which is unfortunate. So Coles has to get a crack uh, at two, which is not bad news. And Riccatelli's there as your kind of third guy who steps up to the bench. Uh, Blackwell and Scrafton is the, the lock and combo. Uh, I think they've been pretty good. I think they have been pretty good. Blackwell has actually proved he's got pretty good hands and Scrafton continues to, to graft and he is good at line-up time as well. Uh, Flanders, Karifi and Savia. Savia gets a start this week. Remember, he was back from injury on the bench last week. He's captaining the side. 
Uh, Karifi's been the tackling machine and Flanders can kind of play six or eight. In this case, it is six. Uh, Campbell and Love is the 9-10 combo. Ruben Love's been... Uh, he had one week where he looked seriously injured, but he, he's bounced back pretty quickly, so it's good to see him back. Uh, Lomape and Proctor has been a pretty good midfield. We've got a, two games left to see Lomape playing for the Hurricanes. So enjoy that while it lasts. And Rayasi Savia and Jordi Barrett is one of the better uh, outside back combos in the competition. I'm not sure if I still underrate Savia because... He's been phenomenal. Is he just playing easy games or is Savia just still the bust that we all know and love? Because I've said a few times he dropped off the pace before he left New Zealand to go to France. But he's come back looking pretty fit. So uh, credit to him for putting in some good performances no matter what. Uh, Riccatelli, Rocket to Stones, Fidel's the the, um, the front row replacements, Walker Leawere, Jose Evans, Roy Gard, and Husson. So just the two back replacements for the Canes this week. Head-to-head -head stuff, it's pretty contrasting, really. Unlike the Tars, where they've got some really solid numbers to back up on, the, the Brumbies are a wee bit less favoured in terms of their head-to-head their -head stats. Tries first with 22, eighth with eight. That's a, a big contrast. Uh, clean breaks first with 56 for the Canes. 8th with 16 for the Brumbies. So it's phenomenal differences. Run meters first with a 1,894. 8th with 1,087. So almost like a whole 800 meters, man. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty contrasting. Uh, defenders beaten first against 7th. Tackling percentage second, 88% against 7th uh, with 82%. The Hurricanes on paper are just smashing it. Line out uh, second against first, actually. That's the one area where the Brumbies edge it. They have the best line out in the competition, but the Canes are second. So I guess speaking good words about their locks on both sides is um, is, is fair comment. Scrums are pretty even. Individuals, top try scorers, Julian Savi has got four. Amu has got three. Obviously, he's not playing. Proctor's got three. Valtini for the Brumbies has got two of their eight. So it's a pretty big contribution. Clean breaks, Savia. Proctor, again, up there for the Canes. Reyasi's the top guy in the whole competition for run meters, and I don't think he even played in one of the games. He got rested, so that's incredible. Banks is fourth overall. Uh, tacklers, Valtini and Stowers are your main guys for the Brumbies. It's Karifi for the Canes, so kind of no surprises there. That's why those guys are in the sides. It'd probably be Savi as well, if not for his um, injury layoff. But yeah... Hurricanes by seven is what the bookies say, and the rugby forecast algorithms got a little bit closer, saying Hurricanes by two. So, yeah, I might go over nosy and see what my neighbors are up to. I believe they're getting a new kitchen, lucky them, uh, from the last time I spoke to them. But anyway, they're doing something with some power tools, so we'll go over nosy. Um, yeah, you guys have any thoughts? How do you think these games are going to go? Seven o'clock New Zealand time, I think 9.45. Should be good games. Um, Hurricanes definitely likewise same with the, the Highlanders the mission is bonus point win absolute bonus point win pressure is off a little bit if the Blues drop a game or if the Crusaders drop a game because the Chiefs who are playing on Sunday have already dropped a game but obviously uh, the Crusaders probably aren't going to drop a game anyway we'll see if you guys have any thoughts talk to you soon see you later